given up all hope and belief and trust in him. And our Savior appeared to me. He didn't walk through a door. He just stood there in the room. But that one vision, that one apparition, blessed me all of my life. It's such a merciful, loving, gentle, tender-hearted, living God we have. Our Lady spoke to me in the summer of 1987. She awakened me from a sound sleep and whispered in my ear. It was an invitation, a call to get up and respond, to, to pray. Um, and our Lord has visited me daily since November 30th, 1987. And that November 30th, 1987 apparition was very significant because it was then that I received what God wanted of me. As I asked who he was, I said, who are you? He said, I am Jesus, I am Son of the living God. And I was, I'm awestruck, I'm just a simple person. I'm a housewife, I'm, I'm a mother, I'm praying, and I'm seeing someone very special before me. I said, what do you ask of me? I, I couldn't imagine my Lord would come to me. And he said, to bear witness that I am the living Son of God. And that really is what my work is about, is bearing witness to his living presence. Our Lady's apparitions to me and her messages to the world, she's also helping me in this way to bear witness to her son. Thank you for making a sacrifice a journey of faith. I'm practicing law in Houma, Louisiana in a small firm called Waits and Downer. I've been doing it for 35 years. I went to Conyers because a judge's wife called me on a Sunday afternoon and said, we want to take you to Conyers, Georgia. And I said, you want to take me where? To do what? So I came and I got water from here. And then when I got back to Florida, I got, I had pneumonia and after suffering for three days and an old woman, you're pretty sick. And so I drank some of the water and I woke up in the morning and I had no signs. Now when you're my age, you don't get better that fast. We came here and we saw the sun dance and this, I went on my knees and lifted up my arms. And then I felt a sensation go through my entire body from the very bottom of my feet right out through the top of my head as though the burden of guilt had finally been lifted off of my back for being away from the church for approximately 25 years. They said you don't understand it until you're here. And uh, there's just so many good things happen that's caused me to pray. I, I said after the first time, it changed my life forever. I guess the first thing that happened to me, I got in the apparition room in a wheelchair and I was unable to walk then because I was suffering with arthritis in the, in the legs. And I, I think I went there for a magic cure to, to be able to go play tennis and snow ski and stuff like that. And, uh, but I got in, inside the room and I began to cry. And I can't describe it. It really, it's, it's unbelievable. I must have cried for half an hour like a baby. But I wasn't sad. I was very happy. But I cried and I cried and I cried. Then the apparitions occur and they're over. And I'm kind of scared to move to see if I still hurt, you know, because I expected to be healed. But I hurt. And about that time, I got this voice that's talking to me that I hear just like you're talking to me. This voice says, take up your cross and follow me. We saw some things that we never expected to see, such as the sun, the miracle of the sun. Uh, the statue on Holy Hill was doing some things that we had never seen before. And then, the, of course, the umbrella, or not the umbrella, but the rainbow next to the sun as the apparition was ending that day. And uh, those were three of the main things. My wife uh, smelled Rosa, which I've never smelled. We went back to our prayers and then went through the crowd again, and it was another arc of gold light on the other side of the sun. And then a huge rainbow over the sun. There was a cross that appeared in the sky, and it wasn't jet airplanes. It was a cross. And uh, I took pictures of it, and it was, it was something that just opened up layers of course, we were real skeptic at the time. And as we came up here, we were able to hear Nancy speak for about 45 minutes, the wife and the children and I. Um, after we left, we just felt like, a, like we had been touched. I've seen so many healings, so many people going back to God that you cannot deny it. Our daughter, she had the experience of her rosary chain turned gold, which this was uh, very amazing for us to see and then we came, my daughter and I came up again in October and we were out on the Holy Hill 
and it was a beautiful day and the, the sky was blue and a breeze blew by us and that was the first time that we uh, were able to smell the scent of roses and that just made such an impression on us. My daughter and I turned to each other and looked at each other and we were just amazed that we had smelled the scent of roses and um, it, it's a very moving experience. And one lady to my left, I noticed that rays of light were streaming forth from her chest, from area of, over her heart. Y vi que una señora le salía y me, le menaba luz de su corazón. And I didn't, I didn't know why rays of light were bursting forth from her heart, but they just were just bursting forth. Y yo no sabía por qué le estaba saliendo esa luz, pero le salía de su corazón una inmensa luz. And I waited. I thought, if this sign is from God, it will continue. So I continued to speak about the love and mercy of God, the living presence of Jesus and Mary. As I continued to speak about Jesus, the Eucharistic Jesus, the light intensified over this woman's heart. And that moment I stopped and I turned to the woman. I said, it's not my intention to embarrass you. And I finally I blurted out and I said, but right now, raise a light stream from your chest. Pero tengo que decir que le está saliendo luz de su pecho. I said, raise a light coming from your heart. They're just bursting forth. Jesus did not say I would know things, everything ahead of time. He did not say I understand all things. He's asking me to walk by faith and just trust him as well. Here's a gift, share the gift. So I was also utterly amazed when a woman reached into her breast pocket and she pulled out a gold pyx. She was carrying the Blessed Sacrament. Well, then I really began to speak in great detail about the Eucharistic Jesus. That is not a sign or a symbol, but it really is Jesus. The Lord has said to me many times, when I open the door, I want you to walk through it. Well, the Lord opened a big door. He's bringing his living presence known again in a special way. And so I began to speak about the presence of Jesus in the Eucharist, his body, his blood, his soul, his divinity. I'm going to skip ahead in the story. The main little woman is Barbara, and she had approached me afterwards. And she said that she had been away from the church for 17 years. And that she wanted to come home. I was at Mass, and Barbara had agreed to go to church and to meet my pastor. Just before the Mass ended, between the area of the, of the altar and the podium, the risen Christ appeared life-size, in a glorified state, risen. He was wearing a white tunic, he had his hands outstretched. Tears filled my eyes, I was speechless. I'm overcome by this great love and mercy of God. And I could hear these words within my heart in the presence of this vision. I've come to welcome Barbara home. So true, my dear sisters and brothers in Christ, the scriptures, believe in the scriptures, believe and know this is the truth given to us. The great shepherd will go after the one lost sheep. Barbara had been away from the church for 17 years. Barbara había estado fuera de la iglesia por 17 años. The risen Christ with outstretched arms. I've come to welcome Barbara home. I just thought of a very dear apparition in my home in my little Ben, I guess he must have been eight years old or seven years old, my son. He came in during an apparition of our Lord. Estaba pensando en mi hijo que tiene ocho años, un día que entró durante una aparición del Señor. When I told him that I was having a vision at that moment, he began to write a note. En ese momento cuando yo le dije que estaba teniendo una visión, él empezó a escribir una nota. And he was writing a love note to Jesus. Le escribí una nota de amor a Jesús. But he promptly turned it over. He was going to hide it from Jesus. Pero se la escondió porque él quería escondérsela de Jesús. And then at his time, he was going to present it, which he did at the, towards the end. Y en su tiempo, el del niño, él quería presentársela a Jesús. And there was a teaching that's already been published about this. You know, and, and I could hear our Lord say, and big people think they can hide things from me too. There was a man who came up to me yesterday at church. You know, he said his prayer was, I want, would you please ask Jesus and Mary if I could see a sign? I'd really love to see Jesus and Mary. It made me so sad to hear that. 
I said, I'll be glad to pray for you, but not in that way. I said, God gives us what we need when we need it. You know, our lady's calling us to be people of faith, not people looking for signs and wonders in the sky, or rosaries that turn to golden color, or pretty pictures. And I'm not saying they're not unusual pictures, but they're a grace then given to each of you, for you. But much more, Our Lady, and their encouragements. The, I guess I look at the signs as just proofs of His love. There's so much more waiting for each of you. But it begins with our journey of faith. I began when I first talked to you today to thank you for your journey of faith. The doctors have tested her in three countries, um, or three different places. They've tested her in South America. The doctors that tested her down there psychologically, neuro neurologists tested her. They were, so, they were not believers to begin with, and they were so confused that they actually turned a little white when they saw the test results. They couldn't believe it. I studied neuropsychology in Italy, and I became a PhD doctor in neuropsychology in Germany. I work as a professor in different universities in Europe, and I am a researcher on brain functions. We show that Nancy Fowler is a normal woman with a brain which is normal. The more than 1,400 pages of EEG that we made show that she has no damage, she has a normal brain. The concentration of energy increases during the apparition, something that happens only in the moment when Nancy Fowler says the Virgin Mary is here. The specialist for radiation, he finds out during the apparition that from the place where she says she sees the Virgin Mary, he finds that is the production of, ray, of waves. The most important for the work I made is that during the apparition, the brain of Nancy Fowler gets in coma. The brain is sleepy, but she's talking, she's alert, she's dictating and that's something impossible for the neuroscientific people to find out that somebody is sleeping but at the same time is talking. And Nancy said that she saw a light around the crucifix. In this moment she said, Jesus is talking to me. We didn't hear anything. But when the physicist, Dr. Callahan, put the probe on the hand of this crucifix and on the heart, the heart was pulsating as if he was alive. This body, this crucifix, was producing electrical activity as if he was alive. And we could see the spikes on the screen of the instruments of Dr. Callahan that something was happening. The most important is when Nancy said, Jesus said, that's all, the, the spikes disappeared on the screen of the instruments. I was an atheist. I didn't believe that God exists and I live in that way. After Corniers, I became a Catholic with a lot of conviction. I was just, just like exasperated. I said, Lord, I really need your maximum help. And as I was praying that prayer, I was very busy doing many things at the table. I mean, I was rearranging things and, and shuffling and, and all of a sudden I heard deep within me, I need your maximum attention. And I looked up and the crucifix in my dying room was bursting in light. You know, he needs our cooperation. He needs us to be attentive to him. He wants us, you know. No one will ever love you like Jesus. No one could. No one will ever sacrifice you like Jesus. Our Lord is alive, but do we live our life knowing and believing this? You know what's so great about my friend? We can talk to Jesus anytime, any place. Believe me, there's not a single prayer does he miss, and I put him to the test quite a few times. Jesus was teaching Nancy about the commandments. He was teaching about the first commandment, and he used, when he, when he was talking about the first commandment, he didn't say obey the first commandment. He said do. And after he gave the teaching, Nancy questioned him and said, Jesus, did you really mean to say do? You know, maybe you, you know, she didn't say it, but maybe you made a little mistake there. <laughs> and you should have said, uh, uh, obey. And he said, leave the word do in there. Do we really do the first commandment? 
Do we, do we respect Him? Do we treat Him as our God? Do we trust Him? Whatever we trust, isn't that really our God? If we put our trust in the world and the things that we can do and we can take care of, doesn't that kind of take the place of our God? So it, it struck me, do we really do the first commandment? Do we put Him first? Do we love Him? Please, my dear children, come unto me as a little child. I desire to embrace and hold each one of you very close to me. Won't you love me? Won't you come unto me? I will never force you. Do you not choose me for your friend? I am the best friend that you'll ever have. And my time for each of you is limitless. You cannot exhaust my love and my mercy, my tender care for you. Come, come, please come. Please come unto me as a little child who needs his mother and his father. I love you unconditionally forever. And my, we were taking a van down to Florida and, and I had the late night shift to drive. So the early morning hours was my time to drive. I noticed in parts of Florida, it just seemed like such a sense of desolation. There was, there was no cars around, no lights were passing me, no cars passing me, no lights of homes, just a lot of greenery, marshland. But at that early morning the hour, most people were sleeping in the van, I felt like such a sense of isolation, like I was the only person alive. Such a sense of loneliness. At that moment, I began to receive an interior message. And when that happened, then some of the people woke up and they began to record what I was receiving. I'd like to share these words with you. From our Savior within me, I experienced profound loneliness. My children do not come to my tabernacle. My children do not love me. The loneliness I experience no man could endure. I am the greatest consoler of human hearts. My children seek other consolations. My children will never be rejected by me, yet they do not come to me. Come, little ones, follow in my footsteps. I will pick you up when you need to be picked up. I will love you always. My children, seek security, but they fail to go to the giver of all security. My love is safe. You'll never be rejected by me. How many tabernacles, how many times do we not spend any time with Jesus? Do we just abandon him? If you knew, really knew Jesus. Si, les digo, si de veras conocieran a Jesús. But you would, you would find the most tender-hearted, loving, compassionate person. And truly you'll be immensely sad when you come to know how tender-hearted he is and that you should ever hurt such a tender-hearted person. Oh, my dear sisters and brothers in Christ, it is a tremendous grace to have visions, but we're not being called all to have visions. But every single one of us, and myself certainly included, we are all being called to have greater faith, as I firmly believe, as I have heard from heaven. And as it's written in the scriptures, your faith will be greatly tested. The time is now El tiempo es hoy. to ask for the grace of greater faith. Our Lady is saying us the Blessed Sacrament. She said, He is in the Blessed Sacrament. Not maybe, not a sign. He is in the Blessed Sacrament. Come to the memorial of my son's passion. Come, little ones. Come all to the Holy Mass. Our Lady knows very well that I'm going to be speaking before many people and to people of all nationalities and all faiths. And Our Lady is still saying, come to the Holy Mass. I am still saying, and I still will, Everyone, women, whatever faith you are, I will send you to the tabernacle and say, go, sit there. 
You ask the Holy Spirit of God within you to reveal the truth. You go and sit and be still before Jesus and let God work within your soul. Go with an open heart there. Go and you will find the truth because all truth, all knowledge, every, all love is in Jesus. Even with Nancy's visions, I guess I knew it in my head, but it wasn't until I experienced it at Mass and in the, at the Tabernacle that I came to know more about his love and his peace. One day when I was troubled, I went to Mass, and, and, and at Mass, uh, Jesus lifted a lot of the weight off of my shoulders. The problems weren't solved, but I just felt much, much more peace. I was telling Nancy about it uh, later, and Jesus said he just entered into conversation, as he does many times. He will enter into a conversation when we're just talking. And I know it's not Nancy, because it won't be the words that she would speak. Uh, but he just, he said, George, that peace is me. <laughs> you know, I said, holy mackerel. You know, it's, a, it's amazing that that peace is me. I met, this, I'm in this particular parish, which I'm, I moved out of the area since then, well, I mean, well, since then. I'm in this parish, and the pastor of this church, he's heard, I'm sure, some comments from people about my mystical gifts. And I want to tell you, whenever I'd walk by the pastor, he'd walk the other way, he'd turn his head. I mean, I'm playing, re the word rejection is, is mild. I mean, this pastor did everything just to, I mean, just about going to his car and leave the church when I bump into the church. So I was well aware that he didn't believe a single thing. And I'm sure from his perspective too, let me do justice to that, you know, being a priest today, religious, you hear about every other person's having visions and interlocutions, right? I mean, they are, I, I'm not, a day goes by in Congress, I don't have someone coming by and telling me, I have a message from Jesus for you or Mary. I think that it's gone to the stream. I think Satan is working overtime. I'm not saying that people are not hearing our Lord. I'm also saying Satan is very busy too. So this particular priest, I could barely take any more of it. I even wanted to try to talk to him, and, and, but it didn't help. And so I went to Jesus, who I should have gone to first. And that evening in the church, I was in the church before the tabernacle, and I was complaining like a little child. I said, Jesus, no matter how hard I try, I can't see you in that priest. Jesus, I just can't see you in that pastor. The next morning, Sunday morning, 10 o'clock mass, the pastor was a celebrant. I saw the risen Christ in a spirit glorified state, life size, and a white tunic stand next to this priest and this and merged with the priest, as if he walked into the back of the priest, and the priest burst into great light. Tears filled my eyes. I said, Lord Jesus, forgive me. Let me not judge anyone. Let me not judge anyone, forgive me. The priesthood is a very special vocation, a very special calling from God. Pray for our priest. Pray, pray, pray for them and help them. Many I know have gone astray. There are many who are questioning the true presence of Christ in the Eucharist. I pray if they could hear parts of this talk then. I pray that God will touch their hearts and they may know. And I remember this lady that went up to be a lector for the church. You know, she's going to read the scriptures. She had the tightest dress on I've ever seen. She had a very beautiful figure. She could probably be a movie star. She's very, she's probably in the 40s or 50s. You know, I've seen many women who want to look a lot younger. That's okay, I guess, to a certain degree. But the dress would not be, in my opinion, appropriate for me anywhere, but certainly not in the church. Well, as... as <coughs> house is right here, a small house here. You know, and she went on to read, and I thought, she's reading the Word of God. You know, but yet she's calling more attention to herself than the Word of God. Will she not be held accountable? My goodness, she's reading the Word of God. We mustn't do anything to impede that the Word of God is being spoken. We mustn't be the recipients of the tension. We must point the way to her son. Let them hear the words of Jesus, not focus on her dress, and her and her dress. So this, you know, and cause others to sin. 
I don't know how many men in that church may have had other thoughts while she was up there speaking. I have a feeling they probably weren't all thinking about the Word of God. But we're going to be held accountable. You know, our lady has said to me, do nothing ever to lose a soul. It's a growth that she's asking of all of us. We are affecting each other whether we realize it or not. Everything we do, we're affecting each other. I don't want to have souls lost. I don't want to stand before Jesus and say, you lost this whole nation, Nancy. <laughs> I got enough trouble as it is. <laughs> Uh, it's interesting how the pilgrims come here, and they're very, very interested in seeing Nancy. They'll call and call all hours of the night. Uh, they'll, they, they're very, they feel like if they can get to her, they can get to God, evidently. But what's more important, how many of those people are spending the same effort in getting to Jesus right where they are in the Blessed Sacrament? Uh, many times I'll pass a church when I go in, there's very few people, sometimes no one there. On Holy Thursday, Jesus was alone. Nancy was the only one in church. How many, that, that was the night before he died. Just like he was alone the first time, she was the only one in church. The effort that people are making to come to Conyers is very is is good, but Nancy is sending them back to the Eucharistic Jesus. How many of them are really going back? How many of them are really believing what she's seeing? She says she sees Jesus alive at the Mass. She says she sees this light coming from the tabernacle. He talks to her. Why are they not going back? And with the same fervor that they're trying to get to her and get to the Eucharistic Jesus. Maybe we need to think about that a little bit. She's sending us back. She's sending everyone back to the Eucharistic Jesus. I tell you, my dear sisters and brothers in Christ, there is nothing on earth, there is no graces in the entire world that surpass the graces of one holy mass. The Mother of God has told me that the grace is a so immense at Mass that you will not understand it in this lifetime. You cannot comprehend it. I do not understand why are our churches not filled? Why are we not going to Mass? No vision, nothing, no apparition sight, I don't care where you speak about, surpasses the graces of the Holy Mass. The bread of life, I've heard these words from my lady. I have heard them from our Lord. But he is the one we claim to know and we love. Are we going there prepared to receive him? Are we in the state of grace? You know, I think so much, two words come to my heart at this moment. It is the word preparation and reparation. You know, often I have heard the Mother of God and her visits in Conyers and other places, I'm sure. She is preparing us. Our Lady is always preparing us. She's preparing us for her son, to meet her son. And I think we have a lot of repairing we need to do. I think each and every one, if we look within our own lives, we can examine times in which we have hurt the hearts of Jesus and Mary. And so we have a lot of reparation that really is needed. We really want to desire to make acts of repair, reparation to the very injured hearts of Jesus and Mary. I go to uh, Mass almost on a daily basis, and to me this is a miracle by itself. Well, I pray about three times more. Whatever I'm doing, I say prayer. But it just, it just does something to you. I went there, I guess, as a bitter person. Here I was, I thought I was a good man. Hey, but I like to play tennis. I like to snow ski. I like to fish. I like to do a lot of things, but I'm crippled. But now I'm carrying my cross in a way that's beautiful. I went there to get healed, but I got healed in a way that I didn't expect to get healed. I guess we've become quite more aware of uh, where we're from and where we're supposed to be going, and uh, it's probably changed our lives in that respect. Uh, uh, we've uh, probably done more praying since we were here before. Well, it, it uh, in a way made uh, my faith and everything more stronger and ready to give myself, my children's, my life, everything to faith of God and, you know, Christ and uh, Virgin Mary, which I always 
felt like she's my mother since I was very young. It's just really strengthened my faith and it's just made everything seem so much more real to me. And I came and from that moment on my life has changed. I came back to Mass, went to confession. I receive the sacraments daily. I now teach CCD to my high school kids here every Sunday. Uh, my husband and I are in the process of uh, getting remarried in the Catholic Church. Uh, my friends have been healed, they've come back. Uh, my life is just very peaceful and happy. And I continue to come because of the graces and the happiness that you find here in the peace. It has helped me in my prayer life. I, I try to remember to say the rosary at, at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I'm more aware of things. I feel a more personal uh, relationship with the Blessed Virgin Mary. The division between God and us is, uh, is there's no division between us. There's no separation between us. And uh, in the past, you know, you look at God as someone that's way up there. He's up in heaven, and uh, he's not. He's right here. It's like a 180. You know, I, I go to church on Sunday, but at that time, you know, you think of God as not being present in your life. Now you can talk to him like he's alive, and he's just so much a part of your life now. You know, through the Eucharist and the whole Mass, you know, it just touches you. As a scientist, I discovered that God should be important in our life. I go to the Mass every day. I want to help the people. I want to study more in my science to help more my patients. And I think that I, I have another kind of living, and I am very thankful to Conyers for this chance I have. It's not Conyers, it's through Conyers that God came again to my life. So I end up kneeling next to the altar, and my, I have a side view now of the, of the monstrance. Me senté en el frente y ahora tenía una visión del del Santísimo de, de lado, no estaba delante de él. I wasn't there but a moment, and the light burst around the whole monstrance. Radiant light was coming around this monstrance. And then I saw the light burst around this hallway door. The door was off the altar. I'm looking at this light, and it's the same, looks like the same intensity as the one on the monstrance. I don't know what this room was and why this light was bursting around this doorway that was around the monstrance at the same time. A moment later, a priest came out, and he knelt down at the side of the altar. I'm going to let George share the rest of this because he's going to talk to the priest. Le voy a dejar que Jorge le hable ahora porque él fue el que habló con este sacerdote. When, when the priest knelt down next to me, I said, I don't know what happened, but the same light was coming out of that room as, this, as it was around the uh, monstrance, the host in the monstrance. I said, Nancy said the light was whiter than white, like the light she saw in, in heaven. And it's the same light that was around the monstrance and was coming streaming forth from the room that you were in. The priest began to cry. He said, I was in there hearing confession. He said, by faith, I knew Jesus was with me and actually the one that was doing the conf that was uh, performing the sacrament. If she saw the same light around the host as she saw it coming from the room, now I know it's him. The priest was paying for a sign. Y ese sacerdote estaba orando, pidiendo una señal. He got up and told the whole church what happened. Se levantó y le dijo a toda la iglesia lo que había pasado. He talked for about a half an hour. <laughs> The ladies, I'm being asked a question about someone who is suffering with cancer. Una señora le pide que qué es lo que la pueda hacer más feliz para que o darle descanso por el cáncer que tiene en la garganta. Your suffering doesn't make any sense to me. Sufrimiento no no tiene sentido. Unless we begin to unite our suffering with Christ. Our lady is asking for our prayers and sacrifices. No. She's asking us to offer up the pain of our life, the things that are difficult. She's asking us to fast. That's difficult to do for many people. Nos pide que ayunemos, que es muy well, difícil I para, para mucha gente. I know gente. those words very well, I promise you. Y yo reconozco esas palabras. But God bless all of you who are carrying the kitsch crying across for Christ. I will pray for each of you, and I ask you to pray for me. Our Lord's words in Scripture. He was asking us to deny ourselves, to take up our cross, and to follow after him. The servant is not greater than the master. 
He did not say we would not have suffering in this life. He promised to be with us to the end of time. You know, Our Lady's words today in the message, she said, my son's words are life. I take those words and I want to plant his words deep within my heart. Don't be afraid to stand for Jesus. Don't be afraid to stand when abortion is murder and to say it. Fear not the judgments of men, but no. fear them of God. Is it time for us to respond? Hay un tiempo para responder. In love and humility, the way of Jesus. En amor y humildad, como Jesús. You know, we're all stand to suffer. Así es que todos tenemos, vamos a sufrir. We need to help each other. Debemos ayudarnos unos a uno and con otro. And there are many of us still walking in great darkness. I wish I could tell every young person and everyone here but to really believe it the cross is a priceless treasure for you. Let the cross become your sign of victory by embracing it and accepting it. We need that cross before we can get to heaven. I'd like to bring her words to your heart again. Quiero traer sus palabras a sus corazones de nuevo. Seventy-five years ago, 75, hace 75 años, I came to three little shepherd children to deliver a message to all of mankind. And I've come today to deliver a message. And children, you must stop offending God. Offer your prayers and your sacrifices in reparation for the sins of the world. Blessed, the Blessed Mother said, I want the world to know that my apparitions here are direct, linked directly to Fatima. Uh, and I've wondered about this. She said, in time the world will come to know. Why? And it, I have, I've thought about why. Some of the similarities are that when the uh, children of Fatima uh, first saw the Blessed Mother, it was at the end of the First World War. And she told them that this war would end soon. But if man didn't turn back to God, a, gr a greater war would befall them. I found a, a, a book, a Life magazine, back in 1948, that said what she told them at Fatima had come to pass, including the Second World War. She had asked for reparation, and even the secular press said that her warnings of war were not heeded, and that the war, Second World War, came true just as she had predicted, with a light in the sky preceding the war. I found this astounding, that the secular press recognized that what she had predicted had come true. One of the similarities is that Reparation is asked for over and over here, and it's asked for over and over in, in, in Fatima. At first, I didn't understand what reparation was, but sin broke our relationship with God, and reparation repairs that break. It's a repair of the break in love between man and God. So we have to repair that break in love by giving our hearts back to Jesus sacrifices to give up our will for God's will, to, to make any sacrifice of what we want to do for what God wants to do. The more we choose what God wants over what we want out of love, the more we repair that process, the more we're willing to sacrifice, to suffer even little things in order to please God with His will over our will then the more and more we repair that break in love between man and God. And the Blessed Mother has asked that this prayer be put on the back of her holy card here. Uh, this, is, this is the holy card. The prayer that the angel of peace taught the children at Fatima was almost Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I adore thee profoundly. I offer thee the, the most precious body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ present in all the tabernacles of the world in reparation for the outrages, sacrileges, and indifferences whereby he is offended. And through the infinite merits of his most sacred heart and the immaculate heart of Mary, 
I beg of thee conversion of poor sinners. And our loving mother in Conyers has said, let this prayer be echoed all over the world. The angel of peace and the blessed mother, our loving mother in Conyers, are calling for Eucharistic reparation. It's breaking the, uh, mending the break between us and the source of all of our peace. It will prove to be very, very important in the future. We will understand this more and more as we walk away from peace. We walk away from the Eucharistic Jesus. We will find that we will want to come back. We'll say, where did we lose our peace? We lost our peace when we walked past the Eucharistic Jesus. We can find him again. We can find peace if we find our way back to him in the Eucharist. Well, I know for sure everyone has a guardian angel, and the guardian angel is, is to help that soul for the whole lifetime to return to God, and to, to help guide us, to be there to protect us. All those things that you would really know about as a child are true. I can give you just many examples, where I'll just give you one. Well, one day I was, I was peeking in my child's room to see, just to make sure he's okay, he's gone to sleep. And I was so startled when I peeked in his room because on top of my child's pill pillow was the most beautiful angel sitting there. And it was such a, to me, such a tender, precious moment. My child was sound asleep. He looks like a little angel when he's sleeping too. And he is an angel when he's awake. But there was a real angel sitting on top of his pillow. It's a spiritual creature. It was all white, supernatural light. The angel had a robe on and the angel had wings. Don't be discouraged if you cannot say 15 de a fifth complete rosary, 15 decades. Our Lady asks that we meet once a week in Conyers and pray 15 decades. She said pray the rosary every day. What you can do. Many a times I have fallen asleep with the rosary in my hand. And then many times I understood my angel was praying the rosary for me. I think I must be worrying my angel out these days. Be joyful about prayer. Don't look at it as an obligation. Our Lady says, put that desire in your heart. You're communing, you're talking with God. It's so wonderful, you can do it anywhere, anytime. I was in the Blessed Sacrament Chapel of this church one time, and I was kneeling behind a couple of women, and they looked like they were in very deep prayer. I'm afraid I broke their silence. Well, I got excited because I saw the angels on either, in both sides of the ladies. The angels are with us, they're reality, they're spiritual creatures. Pray to the angels, thank your angel. I've seen my children's guardian angels. You know, I have a young son, eight years old. Boy, was I surprised to see how big his angel was. <laughs> I thought, he needs a big angel. He's very mischievous. I will share the message again with you, my dear children. In the peace of my son Jesus, I greet you. Peace. Peace will not come upon the world unless you return to God. I've come to deliver an urgent plea. The urgent call is for all of mankind to return to God now. Our hearts are grievously offended by the sins of ungrateful souls all over the world. I came to Fatima and asked for reparation. And again I come and I seek willing souls to make reparation. Please, dear children, you must stop offending God. It was at that moment that a very dark substance that flowed very slow came out of her left eye. I warned you of wars, of natural disasters, famine and droughts and floods and epidemics and sufferings of every kind. And you failed to understand that God wants you to amend your ways. Pray as you've never prayed before. She cries again. Pray, children, pray. 
My children, the further you walk from God, the more you become a slave. Your very freedom is being taken from you. Take to heart these words and return to God. And I got the sense she was thanking everyone here. Thank you for your prayers and your sacrifices. And as you make the sign of the cross, Our Lady ascended. I had a vision, and I was outside this, I was in this big church, cathedral-sized church, and I saw, and I saw outside the church a hunchback beggar. He had tattered clothing, and his back was all hunched, and he was walking back and forth. And he was, and it was the door was closed, and I, I got the sense the beggar was trying to see what were the people doing inside that church. The people came out from the mass, and and everyone inside they just ignored the beggar, and he was walking back and forth, but no one stopped to talk to the beggar. It has so struck me in that vision. The beggar wanted to know what was happening inside that church. I thought, wait, these are all Christians, all Catholics. They've just received Jesus. They are living witnesses to a real presence of Christ. They've just received him. We're called to bear witness. I'm called to be a witness. So are you. But no one wanted to witness about Jesus. They've just partaked of him in the mass. But everyone ignored the beggar. You know, in that city, what happened? I got, I got, I went on to the auditorium to speak, and someone said to me in the auditorium, "We saw the beggar. There really was a beggar outside the church. There was a man, just as you described. I didn't see the physical person of him. I saw him in a vision." I said, "Did you stop and talk to him?" No. We know, but our Lord is asking us to be a witness, a witness to the good news. What is a witness? Is a witness not someone who is present, who tells what they see and what they hear? You're a witness. You're a witness right where you are. You've just received Jesus. Go out and share the love of Jesus. Go out and share it with your sisters and brothers. We can't all stand before a crowd. And believe me, you won't all want to. But I'm saying, but we can be a witness right where we are. Go out and be that witness for Jesus. Be a true witness for Him. Go out and share that love. We need to be the arms, the lips, the hearts, the feet. Our Lady said, go out to your sisters and brothers and speak of my son. Be prepared. You'll be rejected. You won't be liked. Maybe mocked. Call crazy. All kinds of wonderful things. But you know what? We can rejoice. Pero saben qué? Pónganse contentos. Think of the beatitudes. Acuérdense de las gracias. Blessed are they who are persecuted for my sake, for the kingdom of God is theirs. Go out to the world and proclaim the good news. Go out and be witnesses of Christ. We're all called to do this. Those very words I just said to you, I was thinking about those words. I was driving down 138. I just come from Mass, having heard that from Mass. But you know, the words I was just thinking about go out to the whole world and proclaim the good news. The sky just illuminated in great, immense light. The witness begins with you right where you are in your walk of life. God bless all of you. There's absolutely, absolutely no doubt in my mind. So many things have happened to me that I know. And you have to sense it and feel it. It's a feeling of love and joy and peace that you can't describe. You've got to sense it. Yes, Kanye's Georgia is for real. You know she is here when you look around and you see 100,000 people all praying together. They've got to be here for a reason, and they sure all didn't come on their own. Something sort of gave them a boost. I come here every month, and I gather with the people around here, and I see the people coming and ask for confession and ask for blessings, and that's a miracle itself. So even if the mother was not here, that is here, but even if she was not here, having the people coming for confession, having the people come to be blessed, that's enough, that's something that the people needed. Because I had a feeling of Virgin Mary is here, and so Christ. I believe they are definitely real. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt in my mind. Yeah, yeah. real, very. Such as Fatima, such as uh, in Mexico City, or Our Lady of Guadalupe, 
and all the other places where the Blessed Virgin appears, including Lourdes. This place is similar to that as far as I'm concerned. And that's why I come here, because I know when I come here, I'm at a holy place. After the studies we make, through the conversions I saw, I think that Conyers is, is authentic, and I am very sorry that many people don't believe. Not uh, believe because they don't want, because they, they are closing their hearts, they are not open. I was in many countries, and I think this is a blessed place and the people should understand in this time that something important is happening here in Congress. I, I don't know if you heard the beginning part when our lady first came. To the dear children, thank you for responding to my call. My call goes out to all mankind to have great faith in God. She's the mother of God is calling us to faith. Again, I say to you, she's not calling us to be people of visions or to have to look for signs only. I pray that this pilgrimage for you will be a pilgrimage, a journey of faith. And if you need reconciliation in your life, I pray that you'll take this opportunity to make amends with God and with your fellow man. The time to be reconciled with God is now. <laughs>